name's Annette Risley and um, with my husband Dave we run the Folly Wildlife Rescue Trust um, and the aims of the charity is to build it up so that well, obviously when we get too old to carry on doing it then it's going to be in safe hands, um, its future is going to be secure. We started it at home um, about 26 years ago uh, at our home in Eridge and um, as it, as it got bigger, we realised it needed to, you know, we needed to get better premises. We started fundraising about eight, eight years ago and uh, did very well. Just members of the public sort of sharing our vision. Hello, my name's Antonia Blackler and I'm hospital supervisor for the Wildlife Rescue. I've been with Foley since 2008. Um, I actually started at the charity as a volunteer and I used to work in the intensive care unit um, every Saturday, but I used to do some really long shifts, but it was um, it was really good because you got to see the variety of animals that came in and just learnt pretty much on the job. So I moved over to the hospital when it opened back in um, end of March, April 2012. So I've been working at the hospital since it's been open. So for a year now. So we do get a lot of hedgehogs that come in with heavy tick burden. And um, normally ticks only attach themselves to hedgehogs that aren't well. So you'll have two, you can have two hedgehogs in the same nesting bed. One will have absolutely no ticks on it whatsoever and the other one will be absolutely riddled. So of course we have to remove all of the ticks first of all and give them antibiotic cover because there is something wrong first of all with the hedgehog because they've got the ticks and secondly with the ticks of course they can get really bad and get infection that gets into the bloodstream so especially with a heavy burden like that they're normally quite poorly. Hannah Spurgeon, I'm a volunteer at Folly Wildlife Centre. Every morning we come in and have a um, look around and um, see what new patients we have because um, there's always something new in every day um, and then we start cleaning out and feeding them all because um, hygiene is really important here obviously to stop the transmission of disease. Every animal is different so we um, really care for each individual's needs. Um, some, some animals don't like certain things that we give them so we cater it each day. All of the hedgehogs are weighed, as long as they're not hibernating, um, just so that we can monitor their progress because they are quite fussy eaters. And when we check on his charts, we can see that he's, um, he's put on a bit of weight since yesterday. We know they're doing something right and we can keep feeding him what he's on. We know that he's, he's eating it and he's doing well. the releases we often try and release them back to where they came from especially if they're adults because well one there might be a social group of animals in that area um, secondly evidently it's a good area for them to be in food source is good and they know the area so that's our kind of ideal scenario um, sometimes we do have to relocate animals if they've been handed into a vet we don't know where they came from if they're orphaned um, so we try and always take into consideration what nasties are going up on in the outside world as regards shooting and hunting. So at the site here now we have facilities for the Fox Project as well. They rent a, a whole building from us so it's very nice to have them on our doorstep so we can share all of the wildlife casualties and they deal specifically with foxes keep going obviously you need money all the time so we've got a good supporters group and we uh, do lots of fundraising we have no other support from outside so uh, it, it's all up to, you know it's down to us to raise all the money that we need to keep it running and to keep going for the future I've always loved wildlife and um, there's not many people in terms of professional people that really look out for wildlife I also think that when they're injured, when they're sick and when they're maimed, there's no support mechanism for them. If you do find anything that's injured or maimed, just don't make it somebody else's problem. Just kind of pick it up, put it in a box, make it warm and take it to a veterinary practice, call your local wildlife centre. But there's lots that the public can do just to keep your eyes open and to treat everything equal. 
anybody has a, a problem with a, a wildlife casualty or need, they need any advice, uh, we're open every day from 8 until 8. But outside those hours you can visit the website and that's got uh, lots of information and advice on there, which is follywildliferescue.org.uk. Mm -hmm.